You're the director of the translation school at Charles University in Prague. Okay. Uh, what kind of translation studies do you do there at the moment? Well, the Institute of Translation Studies um, has existed since 1963, which is uh, quite a long time. And uh, we have had uh, the MA degree in translation and interpreting, which is an undergraduate degree so far to our standards, but it will change uh, with Bologna. Mm -hmm. Next year we are restructuring, so we'll have the BA plus MA. That's and three plus two? Or three plus two, two okay. yes. And since 1996 we have had the doctoral program in translation studies, which is, uh, if you want, purely theoretical. So the students uh, are not taught translation and interpreting courses, but uh, it's all about theory. Um, we actually, uh, our students can specialize either in the history of translation or theory and didactics of translation or in theory and didactics of, of interpreting. Mm -hmm. We have also the possibility of um, uh, specialization in uh, um, computer translation or um, uh, you now call it somewhere uh, somewhat different. Localization. No localization. Machine translation, machine translation. I would say it's okay. purely right. machine translation. Okay. But uh, so far we haven't had any candidates uh, for that uh, specialization. What kind of students do you have? Are they all local students? Local um, Czech students? Our students in uh, the undergraduate degree are Czech students. We also have Slovaks. And uh, uh, we started to have quite a number of uh, students who are Russian or of Russian origin because after or during the 90s, uh, quite a lot of uh, Russian people moved also in our country. Mm -hmm. What about the PhD students? Are they the all PhD students, uh, uh, well, um, they are mostly Czech, but we have, uh, so far we've had one... Uh, um, from, well, she is Italian, but she came to us via Slovakia. It's Daniela Laudani, who is mm -hmm. just finishing her thesis, and uh, she perhaps will sometimes or one time come in, down into history because she uh, recently translated uh, Anton Popovic's book. Oh. All your teaching is in Czech. Yes, all our teaching is in Czech, uh, well, uh, except for some courses in the undergraduate uh, program mm -hmm. where students uh, have their foreigner uh, lecturers, especially when those don't speak, uh, speak Czech. Mm -hmm. Does that create problems for mobility, for example, at the PhD level? Or? Uh, well, for the PhD level, uh, the students uh, uh, have... Uh, I would say good skills in English, mm. receptive and productive. So uh, when we have um, guest professors, uh, they uh, deliver their uh, lectures uh, in English and communicate in English. So that doesn't really make any problem. Mm. Okay. What are the main theoretical lines that you, main approaches to translation that you would give students at the PhD level? Um, well, I would say that uh, we are very open uh, theoretically and methodologically and um, I think that our strategy is to give the students an insight into as many um, theories mm -hmm. and methodological approaches as possible. Uh, but of course you can't do everything, but uh, we tried to, to give them a kind of guidance into being, uh, for being very open, mm -hmm. because the basic methodological and theoretical approach, of course, is what they absorbed and what I absorbed um, at school in my country, which is uh, the Prague functional or Czech functional structuralism. Mm -hmm. But when I say Czech functional structuralism, we shouldn't forget that... Uh, uh, since 1918 until the early 90s, uh, 
the Czechs and Slovaks had one country, so it was Czechoslovakia. Mm -hmm. But we use the word uh, Czech structuralism because, as we all know, it originated uh, in Bohemia and it is connected with the Prague circle of, okay. of linguistics. What would be the main concepts in that theoretical legacy? Oh, well, very that's very difficult, but uh, let me think. Uh, perhaps what is famous, um, um, even outside our country, is uh, Jakobson's equivalence in difference. But uh, I think that it's quite difficult to, to understand the principles or even what he meant uh, what he meant uh, when he said this very nice sentence because there is all in it since um, people normally uh, can read or read Jakobson and Levy mm -hmm. uh, in translations that is uh, let's say in Venuti's reader and what you find there is only two short articles these are principal articles but it's so difficult to understand what equivalence in difference is perhaps uh, this is the principle of uh, um, function and communication. So the, uh, the structuralist theory is based on a model that looks at texts as messages produced in communication or in a communication process for a communication purpose. And this communication purpose is called the function. That's why functionalism. Mm -hmm. um, so equivalence and difference, in fact, means that whatever form uh, or whatever uh, text you may use, it's all right if it reaches or if it uh, yes reaches uh, the intended function. So if you say, for example, you are an angel and uh, let's say in the other language you say go to hell it may be perfectly equivalent and very different as you can see in the makeup mm -hmm. of signs if the function is the same if you really say for example go to hell and if it means uh, you are an angel then that's perfectly all right for the Prague structuralists the role of systems theory in Prague structuralism well, it's basically a systems theory, um, philosophically and methodologically. I know that you're driving at uh, the, the question whether the, the, the object that we observe has or is itself structured as we see it, or if we only project structure into the ob mm -hmm. object. Um, here, I would say, and it's my interpretation of the theory, that uh, the Czechs uh, uh, saw structure and used the word or the concept of structure as a methodological mm -hmm. tool. Yeah. Without essentialist underpinning. Yes, without yeah. saying that uh, that object has uh, a structure in itself. Just like to go back briefly, Susanna, when you were about 26, where were you? When you were at the age of people doing PhDs. 26, uh, 26, it was 1978. Well, well, I have to remember by dates. <laughs> 1978, I was working as a graduate translator and interpreter, doing a, a lot of interpreting mm -hmm. between Czech and English and Russian and English, and also some translations. And I was actually about to finish my PhD, but this is not uh, an equivalent of the PhD uh, you understand in, let's say, um, Anglo-Saxon mm -hmm. or British terms, but uh, I would say it's an equivalent to an MPhil, mm -hmm. something like that. And it was quite difficult because at that time uh, we didn't have MPhil or PhD in translation studies because it was an unrecognized discipline at that time. So I had to do it in uh, uh, Slavic studies. Mm -hmm. I had to, to learn uh, the history of the or historical grammar of Russian, which we hadn't had in our translation studies, and so on. So it was mm -hmm. quite tough. <laughs> but you, you were a working translator interpreter? Yes, I was a freelance translator and interpreter. Okay. 
When did you get into teaching? Oh, I got into teaching by chance because uh, I remember my brother once uh, uh, brought me. Um, it was in early in the early 80s. He brought me an advert or a, an announcement from newspaper saying that there was a position of uh, for a PhD student in the translation department. So I went there and they told me, well, yes, it's an announcement, but this position has already uh, been unofficially taken because this is for uh, someone else. And at that time, um, if you wanted to do uh, or to be a PhD uh, student, especially intramural student, then uh, you had to, to have a very you had to have a very good ideological background. Okay. And this is what I didn't have, and I wasn't a party member, a communist party member. So, and then uh, the same person told me, but wait a minute, there's a vacancy in the English section, mm -hmm. so why don't you join the staff? Well, and I said yes. Um, so in 1981, I joined the, the staff, the teaching staff there. How long have you been director there? Right. Um, well, uh, this came after the, the, the Velvet Revolution because all that time I stayed, uh, I, well, I refused to become party member. Mm -hmm. So they were very open telling me, well, Susanna, uh, if you don't want to join the party, forget about your career. And I said, okay. They couldn't believe their eyes, so they asked me whether I wanted to emigrate, and I said no, I stayed mm -hmm. on. Um, in the late 80s, uh, because of Pierestroika and everything was falling, the ideology, I think, I mean, uh, so uh, they sent me uh, for a year to Edinburgh University, where I did my MSc in Applied Linguistics. I came back after the revolution, the situation in the department was uh, very bad or discouraging because there were former communists with former non-communists and it, uh, it really made me think of leaving the department and doing something else. But then came 1991 and we had uh, an election for uh, uh, the director of the department and uh, well, I stood, uh, I stood as a candidate and I was elected, so this changed all my, uh, all my future life then. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now you, you're certainly one of the most attractive translation institutions in the world, in Prague. Well, uh, well, I don't know, we have a very attractive building. Yes. Um, it's a Baroque building which was restored uh, in the late 90s, uh, so uh, we are very proud of it. Uh, yes, uh, there have been some, well, not some articles, but I think that we are not a bad school. Uh, we are a member of SUTI since, uh, mid since the mid-90s. Um, the people from the European Commission uh, who come over from time to time to teach and uh, who do exams or tests for recruiting translators and interpreters. Um, they speak uh, very well about us because uh, our former students are doing really very well. So, well, we are not bad, I think. <laughs> well, we're looking now at the possibility of at least coordinating PhD programs in translation studies. What would you see as the potential benefits of such a project? Well, for this, you, for yes, this, uh, this type of international PhD or interaction, international interaction in the PhD program is a very good thing and it's, it is actually in lines or with uh, our philosophy mm -hmm. that we want the students to, to be very open so that they absorb um, anything, any theory or any methodological approach, think about it, uh, perhaps uh, try it out empirically, um, because uh, I think that the future of translation studies is in those young PhD students, mm -hmm. 
now that so much literature is available, um, well, uh, I, I must admit that uh, uh, if you think about the, the, the schools or uh, uh, theories or models, that they are not so uh, really, they are not so many. But there is a lot of, uh, of literature sure. uh, in translation studies. Okay. What kind of things should we be doing that would be useful to Prague? I'm thinking of teacher exchanges, student exchanges, student mobility. Um, I think that the most useful thing for Prague would be not only what we've been doing so far, like uh, having invited uh, professors or visiting professors, but I think that uh, perhaps internationally it would also be good if uh, the teachers from Prague uh, mm -hmm. go to other universities and uh, have contact with PhD students from somewhere else because um, unfortunately Czech structuralism is not very well known outside and I think it, uh, uh, even if it's old, uh, it's, uh, it is something that has not been surpassed or is even modern or discussed today, so I think that the foreign students would also benefit. And what would be the, the, the benefit for our students is that they would uh, get into interaction with international students. I don't know why, but Daniela Lovdani is an exception. She liked to, to travel and to interact, so she, she was at the, um, at the Setra School mm -hmm. in Misano. Uh, at another summer school in, uh, I think it was in Manchester at that time, and she, she spoke uh, at many conferences. Mm -hmm. But other students like to sit at home, which I don't really like. <laughs> okay, that's why you're in Tampa. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Thank you're you. welcome. Thank you.